Nothing. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Indiana Sports Beat takes a lot for joining us and taking us along wherever you're going, whatever you may be doing. Takes a lot for taking Indiana Sports Beat along for the ride. Jim Coyle with you, as always, here on this Monday. Justin Kalen, high atop Crew Chief's box, as always. That's right. Hope uh, you had a great weekend, and we can get your week off to a great start. A lot to talk about, a lot to get to. Man, Indiana basketball does it again. Taking on Michigan State, we'll get to that. Don Fisher's on the program today. We'll talk to Drew Davis. Uh, we'll hear from Drew and the IHSA sectionals wrap up. A lot of surprises, a lot of things to talk about there as well. Uh, Indiana baseball, what what is it going on? There was so much happening this weekend, uh, but let's get to the headlines right now with Justin. All right, here are your daily Hoosier headlines for this fourth day of March 2019. As Jim mentioned, a big weekend, a lot going on as Indiana men's and women's swim and dive both win the Big Ten Championship. For the men's team, it is their third straight. Big wins for Indiana's basketball teams this weekend as well. Men completed a sweep of Michigan State 63-62 on Saturday. Justin Smith led the day with a career day, 24 points. IU women beat Purdue yesterday, 73-51. Allie Patberg led the way for the Lady Hoosiers with 18. Baseball went 2-1 and one on the weekend, moving their record to 6-5. and five. And softball is now 17-2 and two after this weekend, including a 7-3 win over number 10 LSU. Those are a look at your daily Hoosier headlines for this fourth day of March 2019. For more information, make sure to check out thedailyhoosier.com. Man. It's a lot to keep up with, uh, a lot going on there, especially on the campus of Indiana University. Holy cannoli. Yep. Uh, a lot of action, but a lot of winning. Lots of winning. That's always a great thing. The men and women swim and uh, dive team bringing in Big Ten championships. The women, the, for the only their sixth time ever, but the men, they've been around the block a few times. This is their third straight. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time they've done that since the 80s, I believe. But uh, congratulations there. But how about that softball team, man? They are kicking it. Yeah, they are. 17-2 and two on the season. Big win over LSU, 10th-ranked LSU. So no flukes there. The women's basketball team got it back around. They had lost. They played Purdue up at West Lafayette earlier in the season. And I can't remember if they had Allie Patberg with her or not. But yesterday, they just I was at that game yesterday. And they just dominated that game. They dominated Purdue. Non-stop, pretty much from the opening tip. Indiana was having nothing to do with it. They want to get out of that bottom rung of the uh, Women's Big Ten Tournament next week, or yeah. this week, actually. Yeah. It starts Wednesday. Uh, I, I don't know if they play Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, that was probably determined yesterday, I would think. Yeah, I'll look we'll have it to up. find that out. Yeah. But uh, lots going on. The uh, Indiana boys basketball sectionals, IHSA sectionals. Uh, man, I don't have that pulled up, but I certainly have to find out who who won everywhere. I know uh, some of the spots. Big upset uh, down in southern Indiana. It's at the Seymour. You had New Albany knock off Floyd Central. The last second three-point shot in what has got to be one of the best wins of, of Jim Shannon's career. Not, you know, the state championship things like that withstanding, yeah. getting to the state finals, all that withstanding. Um, because I can tell you for a fact, that's one of the biggest losses for Floyd Central in their history. Uh, um, and that, now you have to, of course, the bigger losses would have been at the Final Four yeah. a couple of times where they were playing for the state championship. Uh, but this one has to be one of the biggest losses ever because Floyd Central was ranked fourth. Uh, they were the favorite. A lot of people had picked them to win that sectional, although I don't know if they would have got past Jeffersonville or not. But uh, to get knocked off by New Albany, extra painful. Big-time rival. Uh, boy, I'm a Highlander. I hate to say it, but congratulations to Jim Shannon. That group, what a win that was. A huge, that's a big win, man. Yeah. Big, big, big. And, and they did it without Romeo. And they did it without Julian Hunter, their number one player. So, um, 
That's a stinger there, boy. Yeah. That'll leave a mark. That Jeff team. But was, some other that Jeff team's really, really good. They don't have a single senior on their team, by the way. Yeah, it's not, I don't know if they would have gotten past Jeffersonville. Yeah. Ooh, but a lot of action going on down in Evansville as well. Uh, the, uh, those sections. We'll get to all that uh, when we talk to Drew today. But, man, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing who won. Did, did Morton Central get knocked off? I want to say they won. I'll, I'll look that up as well. Uh, but we got a lot to get to. We're going to hear from Coach Archie Miller. We'll hear from some players. We, spring football's underway. Spring football got started Saturday. We'll hear from Tom Allen. Uh, man, a lot to. Don Fisher's on the show today. Whew. We're going to be able to squeeze all this in? It's a uh, lot to get to. Be tough, yeah. Hey, uh, Warren Lots Central, by the way, they did get, they my did name lose. Is Leslie. My favorite oh thing my about gosh. the Grilled Chicken Club is... Stupid what ad. are you doing? Stupid ads. And they're dancing again. <laughs> it's Warren Central. Who, 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 who'd they lose to? Uh, Lawrence North, or Lawrence Central. Wow, wow, wow. That's, uh, I think that's old Steve Risley. I think so, yeah. I think that it might be. But uh, lots going on, man. Hit us up on the tax line at 812 269 6367. Make sure you like or follow us on Facebook. You can follow the show rebroadcast each day if you don't catch it live. Of course, you can find us at Apple Play, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, TheDailyHoosier.com, IndianaSportsBeat.com, or TheGruelingTruth.net. You can follow me on Twitter at Jim Coyle ISB for complete up to date coverage on all things Indiana. Coming to you from Bloomington, the Graduate Hotel. A lovely day. Eight degrees out. <laughs> what happened? It was so I thought, warm. I thought the calendar said March. It, it does. It lied to you. Again, welcome to Indiana. <laughs> what happened? I, th- this is the weirdest year ever. I, I remember back in December going to a game and freezing because it was so Arctic cold. Then it was warm. Then it was rain. Then it got Arctic, the polar vortex hit us. Then it was warm again, <laughs> and now we're in single digits again, and it's March. Yeah. What? What? M- Midwest weather, man. Midwest mo- weather. Nuts. How was your all's weekend? Hope you had a great time. Did you go out and see high school basketball? Did you check out uh, college basketball? Didn't Indiana have a game Saturday? Did they? Yeah, they played in Michigan State. Oh. Whenever it was. Yeah. yeah. Saturday. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm kidding. Huge win for Indiana. I don't know if you can hear that heartbeat or not, Jim, but. I hear it. That sounds like in, in, Indiana's NCAA lifeline on the line right now as they have brought, they, they've given themselves a pulse again, doing the improbable, sweeping Michigan State, how that happens, I have no idea of this team, but this team has done some uh, funny stuff, man. Yeah. Funny stuff. You lose by 20 to Minnesota, you get drilled at home by Nebraska, and you, and you sweep Nebraska. I mean, you sweep yeah. Michigan State. Should have split with Purdue. They didn't have a chance in the Michigan. They, they were in neither in, in neither Michigan game, yeah. but – Sweeping Michigan State, they should have swept with Purdue. They should have competed with the very top level of the Big Ten this year. I'll tell you who was not all that happy Saturday <laughs> was Todd Leary. Oh? Well, the fact that Justin Smith took 19 shots did not make him happy, even though he was having a career day. Oh. Because, and I get it. The next game out, what do you think Justin Smith's going to be doing? Launching them up. Launching shots. He took six three-pointers. How many three-pointers a game you want Justin Smith taking? Not six. Not six. Guess what? I, 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 and I rewatched the game, and already I saw it. There was, there was one. This was probably his sixth three-pointer, of which he missed, but he's standing at the top of the – out of the top, and he's probably a couple feet beyond the three-point line. He's like, well, I'm here. 
I might as well shoot this. I'm I'm just killing it today. <laughs> of course, he misses badly. I'm like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Here we go. Yeah. So now, if they get on this Justin Smith thinks he can do anything deal at the end of the year, it's going to screw him. He needs to understand that that was an anomaly. That was a fruit fluke deal that he's not a good offensive player. I've never seen somebody get blocked as much as he does. He got blocked again. I, I can't believe he went up and got the alley oop from Devontae Green. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh I, I was like, oh, what are you doing, Devontae? Justin Smith does not dunk. Well, I, I initially when Devontae put it up, I initially thought it was a shot and I was I looked at my roommate and I was like, This is what a horrible shot. And then Smith comes from out of nowhere and slams it down. That was that was quite the impressive play. That's two games in a row now with two sweet mm-hmm. alley oops. Yeah, but I, I saw another play where Justin Smith was open and was blocked. He drew a foul, but he could have easily dunked the ball. Yeah. Dunking is just not – he just does not want to he, – he thinks he's a finesse player. He wants to do everything with finesse. Yeah. He wants to lay it in. Of course, I, I, I will promise you he has been blocked more than any player on that team this year. I'll guarantee it. And it's ridiculous. 6'8 with a 48 inch vertical leap. Yeah. Blocked and all the time. There is no doubt, though, that it was a different Justin Smith. Um, we had not seen him a lot the whole the past couple of weeks. Archie was actually asked about Justin Smith after the game. Uh, so I want to play that clip because his, his an- answer was quite interesting. Attitude is everything. You know, I mean, it's everything. When your attitude is great and you're f- focused in on just doing whatever you can to help good things tend to happen. I think that's where Justin really changed his mindset after Iowa. And uh, with Deron getting sick and not really being very available this past week, you know, he was thrust back in there. And uh, today, obviously, I wasn't going to take him off very, off the floor very much. He had a career day. You mean it changes your mind when you get benched and play six minutes? <laughs> oh, oh, you mean use the bench as a motivator? Wow, what a novel concept. <laughs> what a great idea. I wish, I wish I would have thought of that earlier this season. Too bad. Maybe that would have paid dividends. <laughs> oh, that's right. I did think about it earlier this season. I've been talking about it all year long. Amazing how his mindset has changed with five games to go. Now there's only two, but. Well, at least three. I yeah let's let's I hope to gosh we don't see a repeat of Justin Smith putting up 19 shots when they travel to Illinois on Thursday. You'll take the point production from Justin Smith, but in a more efficient way for sure. Yes, should have been down in the uh, the paint. We don't need him shooting three pointers. He does not need to be shooting six three pointers a game. Why is Justin Smith? Sh- shooting six three-pointers in a game. Why? As Tom Izzo said, he hasn't hit three three-pointers all season. <laughs> Poor Tom Izzo. He was so down after that game, and he did. He brought that up. He said, Justin Smith has hit four three-pointers coming into this game this season, and he hit three in the first half. What are you going to do? He said, we'll never put a guy out on Justin Smith. <laughs> Nobody will. <laughs> And he'll probably still keep shooting. Yep. But Romeo did not have a very good day. Not the first half, anyhow. Second half, he was a lot better, I thought. Yeah. Juwan Morgan, great rebounding. Trying to find the uh, stats from that game. Yeah, Romeo only ended up with nine. Career low? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a career low. Did it, was there one other time he scuffled, scored, and did not score double figures? I don't remember a time. But you may be right. Surely there's been a game. Yeah. He was 4 of 14, 0 of 4 from behind the arc. Yeah. Not a good day shooting at all. And amazingly, again, 
Indiana is able to beat Michigan State with Romeo not having a, a good day. And I'll be honest with you, Jawan Morgan, he had seven points. He was two of eight yeah. shooting. Now, he did have 11 rebounds. Three offensive rebounds, which were important. Justin Smith had three offensive rebounds, one of which was at the end of the game, which was hugely important. Out from disappeared. Three points on one of four shooting. All from behind the three point line. That's not that's not good. No. You gotta get production out of these guys. I know they won this game, but it's just you can't just look at it that way and go, okay, yay, yay, we won. Not we, but Indiana. You can't look at it that way. Indiana Indiana won. If you remember back during the beginning of the season, I was calling out trouble, smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. See, I said, better watch. These guys are not playing well. They're not scoring. I said, they're, they're winning, but better look out. I remember talking about it. And then sure enough, that became the issue. And it blew up. Yeah. Now, they're getting by right now. But that's that's good when you can get by without your stars leading you. Because when they come back in abundance, that should have a great effect, as in like this Thursday. This Thursday is going to be a tough place to play. I don't care that they're playing one of the worst teams in the conference. Illinois has been fighting, yeah. scratching, clawing. And it's at Illinois. They have to win. This is a must-win game. No doubt. They lose this, they lose this game, the NCAA tournament's over. They still have a shot. Joker texts in the show said uh, Romeo only had four points at Purdue. So thanks for that, Joker. See? Shut down. Far from her yeah. career high, her career low. But he didn't – nobody was doing anything in the first half of this game. Nobody. Other than Justin Smith, who had, I think, 16 points in the first half. Yeah. That's – that was almost a, a career high point there. <laughs> I definitely in a half. At one point in the first half, when he hit that 16th point, I I thought it was his career high, but it wasn't. I think 20, 20 was. Indiana got a lot of help because they got some bench points yeah. this week because they only had one starter scoring double figures, and that was Justin Smith. Who'd have thought that? The rest of the starters go a combined four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Add this up. 14, four is 18. 24. 32. Nine of 32. The team, the, the starter shot nine of 32. Besides Justin Smith. Got to have better than that. terrible but indiana was able to hit nine three pointers in this game one short of the 10 they hit in the in the uh, other game against michigan state you give them nine or ten three pointers and it's over yeah. it's happened every time i guarantee you tom Izzo's pulling his hair out no, he was. His team can't shoot anything. It, they shoot against us. He's clearly frustrated. Not not just with Indiana and and the two losses to them, but the way this season's headed in a, as a whole. Tom seems extremely frustrated. Well, I think we got to take a break. It looks like. Yep. Break it up. We got a lot more coming up on the program today. Don Fisher's with us today. Drew Davis will be with us. We're going to hear from Archie Miller, Terry Morin. Tom Allen, we got a lot to hear about. Lots going on this weekend. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Beat. Back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, Bold burgers and ice cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. 
Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. This hour is brought to you by Sweetland Waste and Removal Service, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat. Hope you had a great weekend. Week's off to a good start. If not, we can get it there. Big program. Today, Don Pacers on the show, as always. Drew Davis from Peaks.com will be with us. We're going to hear from Archie Miller. Terry Moore, as the women wrap up their uh, season with a big win over Purdue yesterday at the Simon Scott Assembly Hall. Spring football 
baseball got underway over the weekend as well. Lots going on. Baseball, softball, swimming, diving, wrap up Big Ten championships. Man, there's a lot of action going on, Justin. Yeah, it's a good time of the year to be a Hoosier. Indiana High School sectionals wrapped up over the weekend. Who are the new winners? Who are the surprises? Definitely got some teams getting knocked off. Yeah. Indianapolis Cathedral knocked off earlier in the week. Floyd Central got knocked off Friday night. Who else? Any 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 biggies? Um, one Ford Central went down. One biggie. I think it was it was either Friday night or Saturday night. It may have been for the sectional championship. Trace Jackson Davis and Center Grove won a game twenty nine to twenty eight. Did you see that? I saw that. I saw that <laughs> score. To, and that oh, and that included overtime. <laughs> yeah, he, he, that, that's well, some who was holding. I guess the other team was just holding the ball. Got to get a shot clock in Indiana. Which I, yes, this is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pathetic. I mean, I guess you could say, oh, the coaches are playing within the rules. Yeah, yeah but because of you, they're going to change the damn rules. Yeah. So, yeah, that stuff's ridiculous. Well, and, and the fans don't want to see that, and I get they're only paying 5 $6, whatever it is, to get into the sectional, but do you want to pay money to go sit and watch a game and see 29-28 with overtime? No. No. No, no, no. No, but uh, so we'll have to get a wrap-up of who got beat and who didn't get beat. Yeah. That's what Drew's for, right? Yeah. He likes to talk about it now. <laughs> I didn't see what uh, Christian Lander did over the weekend. I'm on it. But uh, Warren Central. Man, end of an era. They, I forget who, who they lose to. Lawrence Central, I think. Lawrence Central, yep. 67-52. That was at Lawrence North. Officially marked the end of her current group of Warriors who had eight seniors on that roster. Jeez. That's experience. What there. a run they had, though. Over a two-year period, they accumulated... A 46-game winning streak, third longest in state history. And they became the first team in a decade to finish the season undefeated state champions last year. They went 32-0 and last season. And he went over Romeo and, and they all won that game. Bad memory for Couldn't Romeo. Couldn't quite recapture the uh, glory this year. Uh, Joker texts in and says that undefeated Delta team that beat Blackford is very good. Could most likely beat any of our local teams. Yeah, they went on to beat Newcastle. So, well, if you're three, if you're in three A and you're thirty two, no, you're you're damn good. Yeah. I, I doubt that they were playing a schedule like Blackford had played. Blackford had played a week week schedule. How many points did uh, your boy Luke Brown end up with in that game? That's a great question. Joker, get on that. Yeah. Allen. Speaking of the Joker, hit us up on the text line, 812-269-6367. Thoughts, comments, questions for the guests today. Don Fisher's on. Drew Davis is on. Like or follow us on Facebook. Find the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Apple Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, thedailyhoosier.com, indianasportsbeat.com, and, of course, the gruelingtruth.net. And you can follow me at Twitter on at Jim Coyle ISB. Uh, your boy Dewan Jones is a sectional champion. Yeah, I and knew that. Uh, that someone was trying to make said silver lining when I uh, that must have been you said silver lining about Floyd Central getting beat. Yeah, that like, was that was about? yeah that was on Friday night. You had sent me a text that said I'm gonna throw up, and my response was. Well, because of the Floyd Central game, I figured that out. And then I said, well, silver lining, Dewan Jones had a tip in tonight to send his team to the sectional championship. And you were Who like, cares? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's not a silver lining. <laughs> See, not, not playing sports, you don't get it. No, no, there's no silver lining. Yeah. No silver linings. 
I nope. Was, I was just trying to bring you up. I knew how down you were. Loss is a loss. That's right. I hate losing more than I like winning. Uh, Evansville writes lost by six in the sectional championship to Jasper. Uh, wow, that's a little bit of an upset, man. Uh, Christian Lander had 13 points. Christian Lander eliminated. Kobe Barnes eliminated. Armand Franklin eliminated. A lot of big names out. Newcastle eliminated. Did you see the videos of the environment at Newcastle this weekend? No, but I can imagine. Unbelievable. I can imagine because I'm sure it was packed as yeah. always. There's a, there were quite a few gyms that were packed. Yeah. Um, I know down in the the, the, the bossy area, um, Boonville, uh, those gyms were packed. Sec, uh, Seymour, uh, you had New Albany Employee Central and Jeffersonville there all in one. One night, Bedford, North Lawrence. Are you kidding me? Shoot. These gyms got some peeps in them, man. Yep. People wanted to see some hoops. And they did. But nothing bigger than Indiana's win over Michigan State over the weekend. We'll be get able to talk about that with Don Fisher today. Mm-hmm. But let us know what you think. What are your thoughts on that? Big win by Indiana. Too bad they could not have done this earlier in the season because just a couple of wins against teams they absolutely should not have had any trouble with, i.e. Minnesota on the road, i.e. Nebraska at home, Iowa, they should have won both of those games. Yeah. I mean, I can see splitting that because Iowa's a decent team, but they had they were in position to win either one of them. And for whatever reason, they didn't have the team mindset. All about attitude, Archie, Archie talked about earlier with Justin Smith. Well, where the hell was that attitude? I'm not getting them off. I don't care that they won. I'm not letting them off. Where the hell was that attitude? Why, why do you got to be sparked to play? You, been, should, you should be driven on your own. I mean, that, that's been the frustrating thing for Indiana fans. I don't, even, now, I don't, I don't think it's just Smith either. I mean, it, it's a number of no, guys. No, of course not. Now, another uh, another subject that was brought up, and people were kind of laughing, I don't, I don't, but after the win Saturday, there was some people that, that quote-unquote, stormed the court at Assembly Hall. Now, I've seen one report that said that a big driving force behind this was the, uh, the Barstool thing, people, whoever, mm-hmm. were there in raincoats, and they were kind of pushing this. Yeah, which, I had seen that, too. Because because uh, storming the court, ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. What did you just do? You won a nice game. You already beat this team once. Hell, you beat them on the road. You're storming the court. Did you just end a losing streak? Or no. Did you just win to beat the national champ? No. Did you just beat the number one team? No. What the hell are you doing storming the court? Yeah. And now, no, it's not acceptable. And now it's I, not acceptable. Act like you've been there before. This is not I, I, it's ridiculous. You don't just do it whenever you want to. Now if it Indiana has be, had it has to maintain its mystique. If Indiana what? hadn't uh just swept Michigan State and back in 2012, 2013, I think I'm okay with a court storm. Uh, if it had been like since the 90s or the 80s or whatever, since they swept Michigan State in the season. But the fact of the matter is, five, six years ago, Indiana swept Michigan State. So I agree. The court storm it was had nothing to do with ridiculous. Them sweeping them. If they hadn't beat them in East Lansing, they would have done it anyway. Right. It had nothing to do with them sweeping them. So that point is moved. Well, I think, honestly, it was probably just the. It's the number six team. I think the it number was. Number six. Well, I think it was the culmination of a really good week. Indiana has been down as of late. You got you get a good win over Wisconsin. I don't and then care. you come. No, I, I don't. don't care. I'm with you. the point. I'm, I don't care. There's no ex- there's no excuse that you're going to provide that's going to make it acceptable. It's not acceptable. This is not this is the, this is the team you've already beaten. They're the number six team in the country, not the number one team. You have had a crap season. You don't deserve to storm the court. No, that I agree with. It's got to be maintained to be special when you do something that's of high caliber. Okay, this. Ain't it. You won a game. Okay, congratulations. 
No, you don't get to storm the court whenever you want. No. That's that now you just become Iowa State or whomever else <laughs> or anybody else. You're just anybody. No. No, no, no. Iowa State. You just become anybody. Oh, hey, we won a game. Let's storm the court. I think Iowa State was probably the perfect example there. Because they do. They get those wins over Kansas or Texas Tech, and they're always rushing the court. That's all you're doing? No. Gee whiz. People are bandwagon jumpers. They don't have, they don't. No. No. That's my answer. No. But it was a great win by Indiana and yeah. showed that they can play with anybody as now they have swept a team that will, will finish at or near the top of the standings in the Big Ten. They should have beaten Purdue, another team that, that's likely going to win the Big Ten. And they're still in the talk. Joe Lenardi has them, what, first four out? They're on the bubble. Mm-hmm. They just have to win. They- got to win at Illinois they've got to win at home against Rutgers and they need to go win a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament now I thought that it was going to help them a little bit because they were going to have to play early this year in the Big Ten tournament but if they win out I don't know that that's the case Uh, they'll be likely the nine eight or nine seed because you've got Illinois below them you've got Rutgers below them you've got Northwestern below them and Penn State below them and Nebraska probably too I think sitting at nine. So right yeah, now. they need to win two games at the Big Ten tournament. I don't know that that's going to be a tough road to hoe if they get bumped up like that, which they will. Yeah. But they can, and if they want to play in the NCAA tournament, that's what's going to be required of them. I think. I don't know that they get in with just eighteen wins, but who knows? They've got an they'd interesting resume. 15. Yeah, they'd be sitting at 18 and 15. They're the Oklahoma of last year. No one thought that Oklahoma was getting in. And I got news for you. The, the, the Big 12 was nothing then or now like the Big 10 is this year as far as top, top to bottom. And Indiana has the six quad one wins. No, nope. not a lot of teams that can support that. Well, and no quad three or four losses, which is huge. Yeah, looks like we uh, missed a break again. Didn't miss it, but we got to take it now. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Lots more coming up on Indian Sports Beat. Stay tuned on the show today. Don Fisher, Drew Davis, we'll be back with it right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. 
This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450-96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you can fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811 brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Welcome back to the Sports Beat. A little chilly today as the uh, weather drops back to the single digits here in this March. Can't believe it, but it did, and we'll deal with it. How's your weekend? How did your weekend go? How's your week started off? Hope off to a great one. Jim Coyle with you as always. Justin Kalen, high top of crew chief's box. That's right. I got a uh, hit up on Twitter. Please stop being the old guy that hates when kids have fun. It is acceptable to storm the court and kids don't know or understand the tradition at IU. Your opinion is tired and in the minority. Love your show, but lighten up. I disagree. Then they should learn the tradition. Yeah. Learn. You learn that you deserve, you have to earn that right. You don't get to do it whenever you want to, just because you want to. And beating a team for the second time in a season is not it. Nothing was accomplished. Nothing was, yes, they won a game. Okay, nice. This is Indiana. So it's, you learn the tradition. No, you don't just get a pass. That's that's crap. Uh, Rick Rick texted in something similar, not to that, but he said everything is special to kids today, which is true. Oh, everybody gets to get a trophy. That's right. Oh, let's give them. Oh, yeah, let them storm the court. Oh, they're just having fun. No, you have to deserve that. You have to earn it. Earn it. Everybody wants to serve a hand it to them today. Everybody's a candy ass. Oh, hand it to me. Give me my trophy. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, oh, let me storm the court. I want to storm the court. No. Jeez. Earn it. I mean, after. Tired. after not tired. It's called, it's called earning something is what it's called. It's called not having everything handed to you. If that's old and tired, then fine. I'm it. But I, 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 deserve, I, I think that you have to deserve it 
You have to earn it. And maybe opinion. maybe the fans felt like they did earn it. I mean, for being sticking with this team through the season, I don't know. You you come off a, win, a week where you get a win over Wisconsin and Michigan State, it kind of gives you a sense of, hey, we're almost like not like the watch shot, but almost like the watch shot gives you the sense of we're back. Maybe that was the mindset. I'm not sure. I, but I, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm agree shocked. with I, I have no idea how, where the hell that comes from. You're, now you're talking about an era of, of Indiana that was one of the worst in the history of the program that they were coming off of, yeah. uh, having gone through, through nothing but losses and losses and coming out of the abyss, and to a, a game that was their bitter, bitter rival in Kentucky, who was ranked number one in the country, and it was a last-second shot. Yeah. You're going to compare that to that Michigan State game? No. I, a team that they had already beaten this year at Michigan State? So I said they already was, beat them on the road. So I said I'm it was, sorry. There was no drama. The score was the same score for the last minute and a half. Yeah. There's no drama. No, that's not drama. Yes, it was a nice win. That's not court storm. That's just not, not court storm worthy, in my opinion. Yeah. In my opinion. Doesn't make it right, but it is my opinion, and I think it's backed by some pretty good facts. Yeah, no, it's I didn't. Fine. I didn't mean to compare it to the the watch shot. I mean, I I think there are were some similarities in the way that the fans and the students, more specifically, were probably thinking once that game had reached its conclusion. In terms of sitting through a ten game losing streak, losing eleven out of thirteen. It had just grown tired. Nobody enjoyed watching this Indiana basketball team. Then you get a week where you defeat two ranked opponents. Seemed big. Now, I'll be the first to say, I don't, I don't condone they rushing the floor in this, this situation. But see, they, should have been, they shouldn't have been in this position where those wins seemed that big. Exactly. And, that's, and they wouldn't that's have the, had they hadn't laid eggs against yeah. Nebraska and Minnesota and done all these other things. These games are made to look bigger than they actually were. Correct. So, again perception it's all it's no this is not storm worthy i'm sorry get get a grasp on reality folks yeah. come on back to planet earth <laughs> indiana's got to finish the season strong yeah they've got to go to illinois they've got to win on thursday and come back to simon scott assembly hall wrap up the uh, regular season against Rutgers, which I see no problem with that if, if this team continues to play like they are. Now, they have to go on the road and play at a place where they lost last year because they couldn't hit free throws. And, you know, something dawned on me. While Justin Smith was having the game of his life the other day, I was re-watching the game. He was at the free throw line late in the game. Do you know what he's, his, he's shooting from the free throw line this year? I don't. 50, 50-something percent. 50-something percent. That's pathetic. Pathetic. Better than Ethan Happ. Which is more pathetic. <laughs> but hit us up on the text line. What do you think about the court storming? I'm just curious. Uh, Tim texts in and says, Justin Smith finally shows up. Guess it takes him all season to get there, just like last year. Well, that's the truth. I mean... Hopefully that doesn't lead to him shooting 19 shots again the next game. Yeah. That was certainly Todd Leary's position after the game. How many, What? just curious, I don't have the stats in front of me, how many did he hit of those 19? Nine. Hmm. He hit uh, three of six from behind the arc. Which prompted a response from... Tom Izzo. I, I think we have a lot of audio there that I haven't heard play yet. We do? Yeah. I've got a – you want to play that clip from Tom Izzo? Producer's job. Get on it, bro. Talk, talking about Justin Smith and his three-point shooting. Uh, just listen to the defeat in Tom Izzo's voice when I play this. Never gonna gonna worry about guarding a guy that's hit four threes all year. You know, I mean, when we make adjustments, we make adjustments. But we have game plans. They have game plans. They do what they wanted to do. I mean, they they hit ten threes the first game and nine this game. And uh, you know, they hit three big ones late. Uh, Green did. Um, 
and that's what sucks about basketball. You make a shot, you look better than you are. You miss a shot, you look worse than you are. That's the way it is for both teams. And, uh, you know, we missed some good shots down the stretch. They made some good shots down the stretch. I just think we were completely, completely out of gas. And, and uh, that was of no fault to my players. It was a fault to me and the credit to Indiana and what they did. There you go. It's funny because that's exactly how Indiana has looked against these other teams like Iowa when Iowa's hitting these big shots at the end of the game, and Indiana can't get it done. Tom Izzo, now does he need to be fired? Should he be fired? Because all of a sudden, apparently, he's he's forgotten how to coach. He lost the game. And let's not forget, Tom Izzo has has faced quite the injury as of late as well. And if you go back to the middle part of Indiana season – Kind of what hampered them as well. It's it's an exact mirror. Look look at this look at this what they're going through. Look they just lost. They've lost two starters. They were killing people earlier in the year. Now they've lost two games to Indiana of all teams. Do you think Tom Izzo just forgot how to coach all of a sudden? No. That's what happens when you lose good players. So especially it's difficult, especially a guy like Nick Ward, who's just a big body down low. It's hard to compete without him if you're Michigan State. Absolutely, he's one of their better ones. Yeah. I mean, it changes their entire game plan, and it changes teams' game plans against them. It makes all the difference in the world. Travis texts in. IU wins the next four. I think they get in. It's a tall task. Well, that's truth. That's exactly the truth, though. I think they, they it's five if you count the Michigan State game. But these last two regular season games, I, I think they need to win two Big Ten tournament games. I really do. And that second one's going to be a tall task. That one's going to be a tall task because that's going to be – they're not going to play on a Wednesday. Right. Had they, it would have been a little easier for them. Uh, Tim text then says he was for the court storming because we know how to storm the floor graciously. Did it look like they hesitated? Well, I think it was car- I think it was orchestrated. On top of that, which really angers me, it was orchestrated by Barstool. Yeah. That's why that I don't think this happens if it's not orchestrated like that. This was not a natural thing. And that it makes it even worse to me. I'd agree with that. We got a text in. They don't send us a name, but I agree with Jim. It feels like they do it after every win. I still believe that this team would be so much better if on offense we had either ball or player movement. Well, they do. It's just different. <laughs> um, yeah, it's certainly different, but yeah, I think this was orchestrated. Yeah, I've seen it a couple times now, people referencing this bar stool and people in raincoats doing this on purpose. Well, that makes it even worse. Now you now you have you have used an iconic venue and 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 manipulated it. It's been manipulated by by some social media page, if that's the case. Yeah, and I mean I don't know. I don't. Why would? I don't know. What? What are they getting likes out of that? Clicks, website visits, uh, whatever the point of that was. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it happened. I, I saw the video with the guys in the raincoats and and just down there on the floor cheering with everybody. Um, I, I tend to agree with you that it's a shame if Assembly Hall was manipulated by a group like that. But I, I, at the same time, I also don't see it as being the end of the world. Well, it's not the end of the world. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that I don't think – because, first of all, it's probably a a fine. Is that is that not a fine when when you storm the court? Perhaps. I know it used to be. Um, I doubt they've changed that. I, I, I think I recall hearing something like that. I'll My to, point is have a reason – Right. Have a reason, a good reason, not just because you want to. Oh, we haven't – you know what? Hey, guys, we haven't stormed the court in a while. Maybe we should do that today. Yeah. 
What is this? Crap. I think it's crap. Yeah. I think you have to have a reason. You win a Big Ten title, you you, you knock off a rival you haven't beaten in a long time on a last second shot, or you you beat the number one team in the country, and you're coming out of a out of the abyss. Yeah, that makes sense. Beating a team for the second time in the same season? No, not so much. No. No. I, I just don't see it, personally. Got to take a break. But that's just me. All right, let's do it. We'll be back with more Indiana Sports Beat. Don Fisher's on the show. Drew Davis and all. We'll be back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knobs. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811 brought to you by Common Ground Alliance.
Welcome along, and thanks a lot for joining Indiana Sports Beat. Come along the way. Jim Coyle with you, as always. Justin Kalen, high atop the crew chief's box. That's right. Hope your weekend was a good one. Well, we can get your week off to a great start. A lot to get to today on the program. Don Fisher's on the show. Drew Davis from Peaks.com joins us. We'll hear from Archie Miller. We'll hear from Tom Allen as spring football starts. And maybe it's Terry Moore from the women's program as well. But a lot to get to today. Stay tuned. We got uh, everything coming at you. But let's get to the headlines with Justin first. All right. Here are a look at your daily Hoosier headlines for this fourth day of March 2019. Big weekend for Indiana athletics as a whole as the men and women's teams both win the Big Ten championship for swimming and diving. It's the third straight title for the men's team. Big wins for Indiana's basketball teams this weekend as well. The men compete, completed a sweep of Michigan State 63-62 that final on Saturday. Justin Smith led the way with 24 points, a career high for him. Indiana women beat Purdue yesterday 73-51 as Allie Patberg led the way with 18 points. Baseball went 2-1 and one on the weekend, moving their record to 6-5. and five. And Indiana softball now 17-2 after this weekend, including a 7-3 to win over then number 10 LSU. Those are a look at your Daily Hoosier headlines for this fourth day of March 2019. For more information, make sure to check out thedailyhoosier.com. And thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure you like or follow us on Facebook, Indiana Sports Beat. You can also follow the show if you can't catch us live. You can find us on Apple Play, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, you can catch it every day live or anytime on the dailyhoosier.com, indiana sportsbeat.com or the gruelingtruth.net. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Jim Coyle ISB. Make sure to keep up with everything that there is in Indiana and we'll bring it to you complete coverage. On the program today, Don Fisher joins us as always. Looking forward to talking to Don. It'll be a lot uh, more enjoyable uh, conversation <laughs> after that big win on Saturday. Indiana knocking off Michigan State, sweeping the Spartans this year and keeping their NCAA tournament lives alive with another improbable win. The sixth quad one win of the season for this Indiana team. Uh, a strange team nonetheless. Yeah. Wow. They, they are sitting at, what, 15 and 14 right now? Yeah. And hanging on for their NCAA tournament life. I, I, it's just... Um, it's like nothing I've ever seen. But if they win out, if they, they have to go to travel to Illinois uh, on Thursday to uh, take on the Illini, which will be a tough matchup, and then come back home uh, for one more game against Rutgers at the Simon Scott Assembly Hall. If they can get that done and then move on to the Big Ten tournament the following week, I think they have to win two games there. Yeah. But if they do that, uh, that will put them at 19 wins, and I think that they're in uh, for sure without doubt. If they get one win of the Big Ten tournament, leaving them with 18 wins, I think it's going to be a toss-up, but not shocked that they get in because of the wins that they have amassed on their resume this year. Hit us up on the text line if uh, uh, thoughts, comments, whatever you're thinking, 812-269-6367. Let us know what you're thinking. If you want to get questions in to Don Fisher or Drew Davis, we'll do the same. Uh, let us know what uh, what those might be as well. Uh, but a lot of action over the weekend, whether it was high school, IHSAA, uh, sectionals wrapped up. You have sectional champions now moving on to the regional round this weekend. Uh, so all kinds of action. The softball team, they're at 17-2 and two now for Indiana. The uh, swim and dive program for the men and women, both bringing home Big Ten championships this year as the men's just wrapped up their third consecutive Big Ten title. Uh, for the Hoosiers, so uh, big big action there as well. Pretty impressive. Lots going on. Lots going on, man. Uh, I want to get to some Archie sound. Uh, he had talked about the game after the game, the Michigan State game. Coming off this week, Indiana had a lot of success. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Archie talked about how to su- how to sustain that success. You know, you can't let a you can't work so hard to sort of bring yourself out of the out of the out of the hole um, in your certain way every day trying to do that, and then all of a sudden some good things happen for you, and then you change. I mean that, that's the that's the killer. We can't change, you know. We just kind of have to stay with what we're doing. Uh, we got to be about us, and uh, you know keep working to improve on all all elements. But the big deal will be, you know, how ready will we be on Monday? You know, and having guys, you know, 
really ready to go on Monday is a very, very important thing for us. You know why. Archie Miller talking about uh, what they did and what they have to do. Uh, well, they certainly have to keep playing like they have played. Uh, keep playing with the fire, but they've been doing it without – having their stars lead the way. This past weekend, obviously, Justin Smith is 24 points, 16 first-half points, uh, especially when no one was doing anything in that first half. Uh, Jawan Morgan couldn't get much done on uh, production-wise, and Romeo Lankford certainly wasn't getting anything done. I think he had two points at the half, or, or one point at the half. Yeah. I don't even remember, but uh, he ended up with nine on the day on just four of 14 shooting, didn't hit his shot behind the three-point line where he went 0 for 4. Al Durham was 1 for 4 back there. Rob Finnessy was 1 for 3 behind the arc. Juwan Morgan was 1 for 2. Um, boy, they got to get they, – they, if this team could get production from two and three different guys at a time, they'd be a top team. They'd be a top 10 team. But they can't seem to get production from more than one or two guys at a time. Um, and it's nice to win a game here and there, but uh, for this team to, to be good – They've got to get production from multiple players at the same time. And I don't know if it simply means this team just doesn't play well together because they have not done that this year. I mean, has there been a game where, where they've gotten a great job out of three or four guys? I think you can make the case for that second half in the Michigan State game the other night. I mean, it, they had a, a few good performances in that second half. I didn't half. say it. I didn't, I didn't mention anything about a half. Yeah, you said the whole game. Games. No, there hasn't been. Easy answer there. Yeah, and that's the point. And that's why they're sitting at, at 15 and 14. There's the difference. That's why they're not a top 10 team. But they're, they're that close. Yeah. That's the difference. Though. That is the difference. These teams have guys that they're getting support from game in, game out. Indiana has guys that are just, they flare. Boom. They have a great Justin Smith. Bam. But. Two games ago, he's playing six minutes because he doesn't have the right attitude, as according to Archie Miller, because attitude is everything. This team could have been way better than it was. We shouldn't be having this discussion right now. Not even close. We shouldn't be talking about this win being such a big deal. They should have had this one and many others to go along with it. And now everything's, oh, my God, they won. Yay. Yeah, it's, ha it's great that they won. But it's sad that, that you have to celebrate it such a way because you should never have been in that position. And there only are because of a lack of, of, of complete effort, truly. Really. I mean, the health had a, had a big deal to do with it. There's no, no questioning that. It played a big part in, in some of those. But there are plenty of opportunities they had where they were healthy enough that they could have gotten jobs done. They could have gotten – you're telling me that they have to be at the top of their game to beat Nebraska, that they have to be at the top of their game to beat Rutgers? Really? No, they don't. Those are the games that you lost that are on you completely. That, that There's no excuse. There's no injury excuse. None of that. So I'm a little hesitant to just ring this bell f incessantly because they won. Yeah, yeah it's nice, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's kind of how Todd was feeling Saturday. I could tell he was – he's a little salty. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day on Saturday, you, you have to – you can't think about all that came before it. You've got to think about how this team's been playing as of late. And the last – to be quite frank with you, the last four games have been really, really good execution from this team. I mean, it's almost like the Archie teams at Dayton come March – they find their groove, and I think at Saturday, on Saturday at least, you've got to you got to sit back and just enjoy that win, don't you? Well, it's, yeah, for, for Saturday, that's yeah. time to go back to work. Right. I got a ton of text here. Joker's lit me up. So, so Jim, give the Reynolds Family Dentistry Player of the Game to Justin Smith because his performance was a bright and beautiful as that smile you'll get at Reynolds Family Dentistry. <laughs> Our marketing genius. Sweetland Waste Removal Player of the Game, Juwan Morgan, for 11 rebounds, cleaning up all those garbage shots. <laughs> and Bubba's 33 Player of the Game goes to Rob Finnessy because the defense he played on Winston was as good as any entree. You'll get it, Bubba's. <laughs> I 
I love it. <laughs> he lit it up. He's got another one. It's not one of our sponsors, but I'll read it anyway. SWAT team pass control player of the game goes to Romeo for the block from behind. That was a definite dunk. Yeah, they definitely came to uh, together there at the end. Yeah. Kevin texts in, we are a game back of Illinois and Rutgers. If we win both, we may still be playing on the first day of the tourney. I don't think like I like the odds at Illinois. The softball team has a former Floyd Central player who was a junior and was a second team all Big Ten last year. Her name is Gabby Jenkins. How about that? There you go, Gabby. Former Highlander. And then also the Bear Tech in. Where will we be seated in the Big Ten tournament if we win the remaining two regular season games? Well, there's that's a great question, Bear. That's what we're talking about. On where Indiana ends up. And uh Kevin said that they're still like they still may end up in that bottom four, which I think is actually to their advantage. I, I I, I want to see him play in that this year because it'll be an easier game for him, and it gives him two easier games. That second game won't be as difficult, I don't think, because um, those other teams get double buys. Yeah. So that would give Indiana another opportunity to get another win. They they would be the toughest team in that group, without doubt. It's looking like that, it's looking like about an eight or a nine seed. If all if all goes as planned, Indiana should be an eight or nine in Big Ten. So that they will not be playing on the first day. I personally don't think so. No, unless they drop one of the next two games, I think they're playing on the second day. But what well, Kevin said, it depends on what they do at Illinois. Yeah, they've got to win at Illinois. But if they don't, it's almost. But if they lose, then that's a loss that goes against them. It's just weird. It's it's just <laughs> it's just going to be funny. Yeah. We'll just have to let it work itself out. Coach Dave also texted. Not so sure. I heard, but Brooks to make his announcement Friday, March 15th. Nice. It's not there even two go. weeks. Coach Dave with the with the breaking news there. No, I did not hear that yet, Coach Dave. Thank you, sir. But uh, another bit of information. A lot of Hoosiers fans looking forward to hearing, hoping it goes their way. Yeah. Um, a couple texts on my side, too, before we got to get to a break. Uh, Bill text in says rushing the floor is not a fine in the Big Ten, but it is in the SEC. There you go. And then uh, another guy text in said, I think you should rename the show to Morning Bitch Fest with Krabby Coyle. How about talking about women's softball or baseball teams instead of complaining about the court storming for 20 minutes? Because that's what I decided to do because it's my show and <laughs> nobody cares about those sports. We did cover softball and baseball, actually. I did, but I just wanted to say that since I already <laughs> did talk about them. And, and then uh, Josh texts in. Your answer. Josh texts in and asks, is Indiana at least locked into the NIT? Oh, absolutely. Because you don't even have to be 500 to get in the NIT. And, of course, they would take them because they would have such a, uh, a glowing resume yeah. with the wins that they have, without, uh, without a doubt. It's a big difference between the team last year and this year. The team last year did not have wins. They didn't beat anybody last year. They were 16 to 15. They had this record without beating anybody. They were just struggling to get by the, 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 those lesser teams. But this year, they got wins to go along with this crappy record. Yep. So it's a big difference. Big difference. All right, we got to hit a break. We got Drew Davis coming up with us next. So stay tuned. Indiana Sports Beat. Back with more right after this. Boys and free my soul. I want to get lost. Hello everybody, Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal hey, in the family uh, dining area or meeting guess. friends for happy hour to watch the game on one so of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, pizza, burgers, beer. 
We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. TheDailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you can fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. I'm doing good, man. How about you? Good, good, man. A lot's going on over the weekend. Indiana taking on Michigan State. Big game for Indiana. They come out with a big, big win uh, as they sweep the Spartans. The IHSA sectionals uh, underway. A lot of upsets. Uh, all kinds of things uh, to talk about. But uh, high school basketball, there's some teams that are knocked out already that we didn't expect to see uh, getting uh, getting taken out of the tournament. Yeah, there's uh couple couple teams that uh surprisingly went home like 
Uh, Brandon Newman, both Armand Franklin teams, uh, you know, they, they're finished for the season. Uh, you, you, look, you just look across the state and you see, uh, you know, a lot of teams that, you know, probably are expected to make deep runs and they're out already. Well, Warren Central's gone, Floyd Central's gone, Kobe Barnes, David Bell, uh, Christian Landon. Evansville rights all are out of the tournament already and we're just past the sectionals I know I know let's let's just show you that uh just just how hard it is to advance out of a out of a sectional right now and exactly exactly uh you know what it takes and it should it should just uh, I feel like show people just how much tougher the competition is absolutely and 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 even Trace Jackson Davis what a unique game they he must have had because that game goes to overtime and the final score only reaches the 20s. Yeah, and you know, the crazy thing is, is uh, Trace had uh, 25 of their 29 points and they won 29 28. And uh, he, w- w- that, that's, uh, that's a stat line I, I'm not really sure if I've, I've heard before, to be honest. And, uh, you know, we with, with Trace, they, they kind of slowed it down a little bit here. Uh, the last couple couple games or so, and you know he, that just means more possessions for Trace and less possessions for the team to go around. And uh, he 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 really made them pay for it. He had uh, I think all ten of their points in the fourth quarter in overtime, and, and just uh, shut that game down and, and, and basically won that well won that game for his team. And uh, you know Trace playing really well, and uh, you know goes from not taking a shot in the third quarter the other night to you know going out and scoring 25 to 29 and then winning the sectional. Absolutely. And then uh, big news, Coach Dave texted in that uh, Keon Brooks expected to make his announcement on March 15th. Yes, uh, you know, Keon said his announcement day that will be on uh, CBS Sports HQ uh, March 15th at uh, 8 p.m. It will be at his uh, old middle school in Fort Wayne, and, uh, and that's when he'll, he'll make his decision. Uh you know, kind of, he wants to set that date to kind of force force a decision, and uh, that's uh, that's where he's at right now. He's going to make his decision and go over some things before uh, that, that 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 day comes. But now he's in a position to make his decision. So he's going to do it at his old high school, Fort Wayne North. No, his uh, old old middle school actually, uh, St. Paul Lutheran in uh, oh. Fort Wayne. Oh. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, the announcement will come in his hometown of Fort Wayne. Of course, he goes to La Lumiere High School, uh, an academy, not in Fort Wayne. Right? A lot of people hanging on bated breath waiting for that announcement to come, especially uh, after uh, Indiana trying to get things turned around in their season. Uh, some big wins, man, and none bigger than, again, beating Michigan State at home now on the back on the heels of having beaten them up in East Lansing. Indiana has put themselves in a position and uh, unexplicably, uh, inexplicably, but back into the NCAA tournament talk uh, where it, it, their destiny, which it has been all year, but it is in their hands. They have to win. They have to go to Illinois on Thursday and come out of there with a victory. And that's not been the easiest thing to do by a lot of teams, especially a team like Indiana. But they're going to have to find the will to get that job done. Right. And yeah, Indiana says has himself back on the bowl. Uh, they have, what I say, six quadrant one wins, uh, seven wins over the top 55 as of Saturday. Uh, you know, no quadrant three or four losses, which is really good. And, you know, there's like, uh, like I did some research, I noticed there's uh, quite a few teams that uh, are on that list, uh, probably less than less than 15 or so. And they're all like significantly, they're locked in a tournament one through three seeds. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of just a weird stat, to be honest, where you have all those teams on that list or, or teams that are going you know, to be one three seats. And then you have Indiana, who's, who's uh, you know, lost 12 or 13 at one point and uh, has had a roller coaster season. Uh, you know, it's, it's just and like Indiana going out there and getting that win over Michigan State was huge, though. It gives them another, another resume-building win. But the thing for them they have to do now is they just got to take care of business. They got to they got to win win the game at Illinois, which won't be easy. Oh, and, you absolutely! Know, going into not. Illinois, going into Illinois in a hostile environment and in, in, in a game where 
you know, Illinois has been playing better as of late. Uh, there's going to be nothing easy about that game. Absolutely, and it's a, it's a job that Indiana has got to get done. But uh, they've shown that uh, they can have trouble in Illinois last year. They went there and, and lost that game when they couldn't hit the, their free throws. Uh, but this is a different season and a different team. Uh, what do you, th- This team has got to come up with – one of the things they have not done this year is had three or four different guys all play well at the same time. Uh, this past week when, of course, Justin Smith uh, inexplicably was the guy with 24 points, 16 in the first half, all the while Romeo was struggling. It ended up 4-14 on the day uh, with nine points. Jawan Morgan would have seven points, 11 rebounds, but not a lot of production on the point side. Uh, Indiana needs to get to the point where they're getting production out of all these guys at the same time. Uh, and I back to the question earlier, I'm like, do these guys just not play well together? Because I haven't seen them really do that yet. Defensively, they're doing very, very good. They did a great job defensively. Uh, Romeo did a great job. Everybody did very good defense uh, against Michigan State. But uh, offensively, I've yet to see them play well together as a unit. I know, I know. You see uh, Justin Smith has 20-some points. I uh, guarantee Archie Miller would have thought. That the game wouldn't have been nearly as close, but uh, you know it's obviously a really good sign to get get some production out of him on Saturday. He really played you know, stepped up and hit some shots, kept IU in it early, and uh, you know just Romeo and Juwan they were they weren't on their uh, A game as usual. Uh, you know they struggled, but they they kept plugging away and they kept leading, and uh, that that was big for Indiana. Uh, you know you look at you look at uh, you can probably sing single digit points out of both of those guys if if uh you know Romeo didn't finish in double figures I know it was close. But um with the, with those two guys and they and if they're clicking and Justin Smith's clicking, that's a big deal for Indiana because uh that's that's three guys that you know you have three three legitimate options and uh that's been the problem for this Indiana team, getting a third score and just it seems like that that role changes every night because no one consistently steps up and it's just sees that role. And uh, that's where Indiana's at right now. If they can get multiple guys to step up, they, they might be able to, uh, you know, make a run and make a push down the stretch. But that that's very key for them. But I think uh, the biggest thing, Jim, is that this team starting to look like that team we saw in, in December, those two, three weeks where, it just seemed, uh, you know, they, they they could take punches. They they just kept springing them right back up, and then they then they then they would, uh, you know, just find a way to win. And I felt like that was uh, the case Saturday. You know, there was a couple times where I thought Indiana could have been dead in the water, but they just kept getting back up and, and kept fighting, which is good to see. And uh, at the end, they, you know, that fight gave them a chance to win the game. They took advantage of it and were able to, you know, seize the moment. Absolutely, because if you look at the stats. Uh, um, from a shooting standpoint, Michigan State killed it. They shot 54%. Indiana shot 38%. Uh, just the difference. But Indiana, just like they did up in East Lansing, they knocked down nine three-pointers. They did 10 up in, up in East Lansing. But knocking down nine three-pointers, again, substantially more than they have normally been getting on a per-game basis this year. And even Tom Izzo noted that uh, Justin Smith knocked down three and he'd only hit four three-pointers this entire season. Uh, so some crazy things happened against Michigan State this year for Indiana to get the wins, both those wins, but they did. And I'm sure that left Tom Mizzo pulling his hair out. I know, I know. And the thing about Indiana's two wins over Michigan State is the resiliency in the, in the fight was uh, very, very good in both those games. It, in each of those games, there were times where I thought Michigan State could have seized the game, taken control of it. But Indiana would just they just wouldn't quit. And, you know, I thought that was a very good good sign. Uh for a team that, you know, uh, got blown out by twenty something in Minnesota a couple weeks ago to to do that and kinda of turn that the clock back on that to December. I thought that was uh, very impressive and a very good sign of things to come. And also some other things they did statistically that that they haven't done this year. 
not turn the ball over. They 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 are eight turnovers for the game for Indiana. It's only two in the second half, which I, I guarantee you both of those have to be season lows. I do, definitely do not recall a, a half in which they only had two turnovers, but I don't recall them getting uh, eight in, in a game either while forcing – uh, Michigan State into 14 turnovers, so they did a lot of good things. They played defense very, very well. Uh, I know the coach, Archie Miller, was happy with the defense played by uh, virtually the entire team as they did a good job uh, making life difficult uh, for, for Michigan State. Winston ended up with 20 points, and he had a good day, but everyone else was uh, kept pretty much in check. Right, right. And, uh, you know, speaking of defensive efforts, you, you, you look at the job that Rob Fennessy did down the stretch against Cash Winston. You, you can't say enough good things about, and you know, the way Rob just stepped up and really rose, rose to the occasion. Uh, his his defense and uh, ability to keep Cash Winston in front of him and, and uh, you know, cut, cut off driving lanes was very big down the stretch. And honestly, I don't think uh, Indiana wins that game without Rob Fennessy and his, his defensive effort. Uh, absolutely. Tom Izzo mentioned that they ran out of steam going down the stretch, which is very likely, but because they got nothing from their bench. Uh, uh, Indiana was the team that was deeper uh, this game, which has been unusual for them, but they had at least one, two, three, five, one, six players that played at least 25 minutes or 22 minutes, uh, whereas that was not the case for uh, Michigan State. They had – Four guys that played 30, five guys that played 30 minutes. So his starters are playing virtually the entire time, and they get nothing from the bench, and they get no rest. Uh, so Indiana was able to um, outlast Michigan State, and, and they did, and, and, and which is something that uh, has been happening to Indiana this year because they had been going through that struggle with the injuries and not, and now the shoe's on the other foot as they're getting a little bit healthy, and I think people – you understand that it's a lot easier to coach when you're healthy. It's a lot easier to play when you're healy and it's obviously a lot easier to be successful when you're healthy. Oh, most definitely. Now that, now that Indiana has extra bodies, they can they can do things in practice that they weren't able to do before. They weren't able to do before. Uh, you know, it just opens up so many things. It makes makes it more competitive because now you can really push it a little bit more. I think uh, I was told that. Saturday was the first time that everyone was healthy and war- warming up before a game, other than Jerome Hunter, for, for the first time in quite some time. And uh, you can just see within Indiana, they have more options. And they they want to go to a certain matchup in a certain game. They have that as well. And uh, you know, the, the, that's just the thing that at the end I mean, is is a bunch of guys contributing it because depth was supposed to be this team's strength at the beginning of the year. It took a major hit in the middle of the season, a major major hit. But, you know, now that they're back and close to 100%, not all the way, but close, you know, it's starting to allow some, some more things to be done for Archie Miller and more contributions are being made. And I think that's just huge. Yeah, a little surprised we did not see Race Thompson. I mean, he played one minute at the end of the half, but... surprise but you know you look at the Purdue game race Thompson didn't play uh, I don't believe in that one you look at Michigan State game and he, he doesn't play much but tells me that uh he, he's looking at the or Archie Miller's looking at the matchups and he's not not thinking they're good they're good ones for race and uh both those teams like to play the big and play smash round basketball and uh, I think that's basically more more sorts of product of matchups than anything and then this weekend or this Thursday Indiana travels to uh Champagne to take on the Fighting Illini uh, in, in Illinois, a team that uh, is not one of the top two Big Ten teams, but th- they're one you just definitely can't sleep on. No, you can't overlook that game. Uh, you know, you got to be ready to come come to. You'll be ready to play from from the, the opening tip again on uh, you know with Thursday night if you're Indiana. Uh, you know, you need to get off to a good start. Or it's gonna be tough to, to go into someone else's building and, and pull out a win. The big game, and you know Illinois kind of want to play spoiler and uh, kind of put put Indiana's uh, tournament be- uh, tournament hopes to bed, so to speak. Getting back to Keon Brooks, uh, we talked about his decision coming up on March fifteenth. What are, what are your uh, your thoughts? Do you have any inclination of uh, a lean 
uh, of a prediction. What what have we got from the great Drew Davis? You know, uh, he he's still working working through th- things right now. Uh, Keon and, and his mind hasn't hasn't figured it out. Uh, you know, he's he's not really uh, enjoying it that much at this point. Uh, I'll say that uh, he's ready to get things done with. I think that's why you see him set that date for March fifteenth to kind of you know nudge himself to make that decision and. Uh, that, that'll be where he's at right now. But uh, I think it's a very close uh, two-horse race between Indiana and Kentucky. Michigan State's still lurking there, but I'd be very surprised if it's uh, another school outside of uh, Indiana or Kentucky. But what I don't know is uh, where where he's going yet. Uh, I think it's very close, and uh, I think only time will tell, and we're going to need to see what, what happens over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's uh, from everything I've heard, it's gotten down to, to a two-horse race between Kentucky and Indiana, and it, uh, it is almost down to a coin toss between those two. Uh, I know that you can do some things. You can look to see who's on Kentucky's roster, who's going to be on Kentucky's roster next year. I think there's a couple guys that may be in the position he plays. I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, it, it's not going to matter. He's going to pick the place where he thinks is best for him, and that decision's coming soon. Yeah, you know, only a couple of weeks away now, and you look, you look at it, and you look at Kentucky's roster, and uh, you know, obviously there's a couple guys that could be potentials for uh, could have the potential for early entry to, uh, to the draft. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll happen, but I think in a lot of it will depend on how some of these guys play in the tournament, the, the lasting impression they make there. Uh, you know, and we'll just don't, we'll, we'll just see what happens, but. It'll be very interesting to see, uh, you know, what what factors Keon ultimately decides are are the most important to him down the stretch. We'll certainly find out. Drew Davis of Peaks dot com. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Appreciate you, brother. No problem, man. Have a good week. I'll talk to you on Friday. Absolutely, Drew Davis of Peaks dot com. We've got a lot more coming up. Don Fisher's on the show next. Stay tuned. We're back with him right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Poyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch special. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. 
The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our next cold beer. Pizza, burgers, beer, Bubba's 33 and Carson. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Feed. I hope your day has uh, started off to a good start and your week's off to a great one. And we got the uh, best way to do that with the great Don Fisher joining us now. Don, how are you, sir? I'm well, Jim. How are you? Doing well. Uh, good weekend for Indiana all the way around, but especially on the basketball court. Man, a big, big win over Michigan State as they sweep the Spartans and uh, keep their uh, NCAA tournament lives alive. Uh, somehow, but what a big win for the Hoosiers on uh, over the Spartans. Well, a big week for Indiana. When you look back at Wisconsin uh, finally Absolutely. winning a double overtime in that ball game, I kind of look back uh, at everything at this point, back to the Minnesota ball game now, a little bit removed, but nevertheless about two and a half weeks away, and I think that was the turning point of this season where this team really struggled in the sense of playing hard, giving effort, uh, looking like they cared, that kind of thing. And as everyone knows, that game looked like uh, Indiana had kind of mailed it in as the uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers took a, a measure of IU in that particular contest. And honestly, I think uh, when they came back home and went through the, the process and talked it out between the coaches and the players and Guy kind of aired everything out. It's been a different basketball team ever since. Uh, they played both Purdue and Ohio State. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, well, yeah, no, Iowa and Purdue in one week and played both of them right right down to the wire and couldn't cut, find a way to win. But th- they had a new commitment, it seemed like, and without question, uh, they played those two teams really tough. And then they've come back to this week, and they've won two straight ball games or the past week, I should say. And, and, of course, the win over Wisconsin was huge in double overtime. And then beating Michigan State on Saturday, uh, this ball club looks like right now that they're playing like they were back in November and December, playing tough, finding a way to win ball games. Uh, and, of course, most of it's been done at the defensive end of the floor because this team still struggles to shoot the basketball they only hit 38% of the ball game against Michigan State. Uh, they hit barely over 40% against Wisconsin and still found ways to win. So that, to me, is huge. Uh, so this uh, rather interesting and bizarre season for this Indiana basketball team has taken another turn. Yeah, not only that, they're getting uh, production from people that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be be at the top uh, in the Michigan State game, of course, led by Justin Smith, 16 first half points, 24 overall. So what a great day he had. And then, of course, right beside him, Devontae Green with 13 points on a three of five three-point shooting. So those two guys really stepped up for the Hoosiers. Uh, it wasn't Romeo and the Juwan show as we've seen a lot this year. No, that's right. I mean, they are getting contributions from other people. Race Thompson's another guy you could mention that uh, even though he didn't play a lot uh, in either one of those ball games, each time he's come into contest, or actually did kind of against Wisconsin, but when he's been asked to come into a ball game, and here's a kid that basically missed three months of the season, uh, didn't get opportunities because of a concussion protocol that he was in, uh, went through a really tough stretch back in, in uh, December, November, December, uh, January, kind of started coming around a little bit, finally got a chance to practice the last week or so in January, for the first time and then started contributing in February. And, and that Minnesota ball game was really his coming out party. The first time he really had an opportunity to play again. Uh, and, of course, the rest of the team that day uh, played very poorly. Uh, he was kind of the bright spot with some rebounds in that ball game and a basket. And ever since then, he's, he's found a way to work his way into the lineup too. And if you look at what Archie's done here in the last two or three weeks, 
Um, and he's done it really since he's come to Indiana, but he uses that bench. Uh, he uses the bench uh, to let guys know you're not doing your job, you're not getting the job done. And he's had an issue uh, in the sense of being able to utilize it the way he wants to because he hasn't had a full roster. He's had to play some guys that weren't playing their best basketball at times, too. So it, it all kind of has come to fruition here at the end of the season. Uh, it was a really bad stretch, as we all know. But this team right now looks like they're playing with confidence. Um, they're playing with the ability to really uh, shut down from a defensive standpoint. And it's a ball club that just looks different. It looks like the team we saw back in November, December. And if they play that way the rest of the year, they're going to give themselves a chance to still make the big show. There's, there's that possibility. Of course, they're going to have to win out here at the end of the regular season, and they're probably going to have to win at least two ball games, maybe three, in the Big Ten tournament to, to get past that bubble scenario. But this team has a lot of quality wins this year, and two over Michigan State kind of amplifies that. Absolutely. They're a strange team, no doubt, with some big, big wins, but they are playing much better now and playing with with confidence in other their other teammates I think is the biggest thing is when Romeo's not having a great day when he's going for 14 he can have have the confidence and whether it's going to be uh, Justin Smith or Devontae Green or, or Deron Davis for that matter who knows but the Knowing that somebody else can and will step up has got to be big for this team for for Juwan Morgan knowing that they don't have to do everything well, no question. And Juwan in the last two ball games has, uh, has not been himself, at least from the standpoint of scoring a lot of points. Uh, he only had nine in the ball game against uh, Wisconsin, but he had 15, high, 15 rebounds, a career high. Uh, and against Michigan State on Saturday, he had only seven points, but again, he had 11 rebounds, four assists, no, only one turnover, three steals, and, and a couple of blocks. So this this guy is is able to do a lot of different things, and when he's not scoring the basketball, or when they're trying to keep him from scoring the basketball, he can contribute in other ways, and that's that's a big part of what this team now is doing again. They've gotten back to playing sound, fundamental basketball, and most of it has started at the defensive end. There's just no question about that. This team looks totally different defensively. Uh, they look like they are really trying, and, and Rob Fennessy has been a major factor in that regard because after coming back from his concussion, he hasn't been the same offensively, although he's gotten better last two, last two or three ball games now. He's starting to, I think, feel more confident in his offensive game. But, man, he is a lockdown defensive player, and as a freshman, that is saying something. Absolutely. And something else to, to go right along with that. They forced Michigan State into 14 turnovers, uh, which is uncharacteristic of the Spartans. But Indiana uh, only with eight turnovers. So something they had struggled with all year long, they really get a grasp. And again, I, I think that their, def their defense coming back around uh, certainly seems to help that. Right. And, and, and uh, the, the truth of the matter is Michigan State is a team that literally, if you go back and look at their statistics, They've struggled with turnovers a good portion of the year, and when they go up against teams that really play hard at the defensive end, that's when they have their biggest issues. And of course, Indiana was playing dramatically, uh, you know, that fierce effort that I've talked about. That's kind of phrasing that I uh, came up with a couple of weeks ago. Uh, playing at that at the defensive end with fierce effort and that kind of play. Uh, it really disrupts teams, and if Indiana continues to do that, they'll give themselves chances because, as we said before, this team is challenged offensively. They really kind of struggle to shoot the basketball, especially from outside, and now they're having some problems even inside a little bit. Uh, but, again, uh, it, it's a ball club that at least has is fighting at this point in the season and giving themselves opportunities. And finally, they broke through this past week with a couple of big wins, and now they give themselves an opportunity here this week to kind of close the regular season on a real high note if they can beat both Illinois on the road and Rutgers at home. Yeah, Illinois, a place that had a little bit of trouble last year not being able to knock some free throws down. But it's Illinois is a team that, while they may be one of the lower on the lower end of the Big Ten, there there are no. E easy games. And Illinois is, has been fighting and scratching and bringing in good recruits. Coach Underwood is doing a good job building that program over there, and they're another team that you just simply cannot sleep on. Well, they have won seven Big Ten games. Indiana's won six. What's that tell you? <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a tough show when they play in, in uh, 
uh, Champaign and the State Farm uh, Assembly Hall over there. This is going to be a real challenge for Indiana. They beat Illinois in the first game of the reboot of the Big Ten season back on January the 3rd, and they're going to have to play an outstanding game to beat this Illinois ball club because they are playing at their best here at the end of the season. Um, they believe that they could make a run in this Big Ten tournament. Um, they've got some real tools there in the sense of uh, Frazier at the guard spot and and the, the freshman guard. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but he has played really well of late. And uh, Georgie uh, Bishashashili, uh, is the other guy that has been a real factor for them this year, the guy inside. He gets himself in foul trouble now and then, but he is really tough to deal with inside. He's a shot blocker. Uh, he's a very good defensive player, and he really facilitates nicely the offense when he they get the ball inside to him. So this is going to be a challenge for this Indiana basketball team, and then they close it out uh, next Sunday with a game against Rutgers, a team that beat them at Rutgers earlier this year, and they have improved their uh, ball club as well. They've got seven Big Ten wins. So Indiana's got to win these last two ball games um, and, and if they're going to close out the season the way they want to and to get themselves out of having to play on Wednesday. Uh, right now, Indiana has six wins in Big Ten play with Illinois and Rutgers, the two teams they play this week, ahead of them. So they've got to beat them both and then I hope that somebody beats one or the other uh, in, in other words, Rutgers or Illinois needs to, to close out the season with a loss, uh, two losses here at this final week of the season for Indiana to work their way out of playing in the first round of the Big Ten tournament next Wednesday. Absolutely. And, and tonight, uh, Coach Archie Miller, uh, Don Fisher at the uh, this Holiday Inn in Bloomington for the Coaches Show. Yep, we'll have it at 7.05 tonight, uh, one of our final two shows of the year. Uh, we'll have a show this week, and of course, or this uh, tonight, we'll have a show uh, next Monday night, which will end uh, our Archie Miller Inside IU Basketball shows for the rest of the year. But it's going to be a real interesting end of the season, and at least from an upside standpoint, this Indiana basketball team uh, looks right now like they're playing the kind of basketball that Indiana fans want to see them play. Absolutely. Look forward to to Don Fisher, thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to it. Look forward to the tonight with Archie and again Thursday on the call with the Illinois game. Thank you, Don. You, you bet, Jim. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You bet. Don Fisher, the great uh, voice of the Hoosiers with us as he is each week. And uh, looking forward to that tonight. Like I said, check out the coach's show, Archie Miller. Uh, they'll be coming to you live from Bloomington at the Holiday Inn. Uh, that's at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock Central time. Uh, you can catch that right here, of course. And then Thursday, the game, uh, I forget what that tips off. That's an 8 o'clock tip, 8 o'clock Eastern time on Fox. So, again, that right here on this station, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, you can catch that Don Fisher on the call. But uh, show today uh, with Don, of course, Drew Davis was, was, was with us as well. Tomorrow on the program, Chronic Hoosier comes along as for his weekly visit. We'll also talk to Mike Schumann as well. And I'm sure we'll uh, catch up on the IHSA and get ready of the regional matchups and see who all's playing there uh, this week because a lot of fun games. It's always my funnest. My funnest games are the ones of the regional. Justin, yeah. those seem to be some really good matchups. Although we've lost some teams, man. Yep. No regional rounds are are where it starts to get a lot of fun. Well, we'll look forward to it and see who all's left over and see if anybody's going to play more slow down ball like they did against uh, Trace Jackson. But uh, we'll certainly find out and. We've got a date now on Keon Brooks, but a lot more to get to this week, so stay tuned. Catch us each day for Justin Kalen. I'm Jim Coyle, and I will see you on the radio.